In this video, you will learn how to make your application in Angular communicate with your API. Hi, I am Alexander Kocherhin from Monster Lessons Academy, where I am teaching you how to become a developer or improve your skills of being a developer in learning by doing way. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I will link everything that I am mentioning in the description box below. And just to remind you, this video is the part of the free series Angular for Beginners. So let's jump right into it. In previous video, we talked about TypeScript and how interfaces and types are important in TypeScript. But basically, in this video, I want to talk about fetching data and communicating with API. If we open here our app component TS, you see that we have all users' data here. But normally, of course, we have front-end applications where we get data from our APIs. And we don't store data just like this in plain array inside some array inside component. Because basically we get this data from our API and then just render them in front-end. Of course, we don't have an API and I don't want to build now the whole API just to check how Fetch is working in Angular. And for this, we can use a really nice package which is, which is called JSON Server. This is the idea that we can make a fake API really quickly in less than 30 seconds. This is what I recommend if you really need to quickly prototype something. So let's check getting started here. To install this package, you simply need to write npm install globally JSON server. This will install this package on our machine and then JSON server command will be available for us globally in any application. So here JSON server is installed, we can write for example JSON server minus minus version and if you are getting the version this means that JSON server is there. Next we need to create the file db.json, this will be our database with data. As you can see it looks exactly just like normal JSON. So let's jump in our project and go inside root and here I want to create new file db.json. And now we want to create users. So as you remember here in our source app, app component TS, we have users and we want to get exactly this data from our backend, from our API. So here as you can see uh, the JSON is an object and then you have different entities as a key. So posts, comments, profile. If we want to create users then here we can make an object and here write users. And just to remind you, inside JSON you always need to use double quotes, because without double quotes it won't be valid JSON. Now here is an array and I will copy everything that we have from here. Because as you can see we can simply pack an array inside for example users. So here are our users and here I put everything inside. And of course it is all broken because we need to wrap everything in double quotes. So here are ID, name and then age. And of course numbers you don't need to wrap in double quotes, only strings. Now I will remove two entities because it's easier to copy something that we already changed. So here we have ID 2 and the name is John and the age is 25 and here is ID 3 the name is Sam and the age 29. And here we need to remove comma. As you can see, this is now simple and completely valid JSON. And this is exactly our database, actually fake database, but we will get data as from normal API. So let's check how we can start our JSON server. So here you can see JSON server watch and then db.json. So let's run this command inside console. So you need to keep it running and now inside localhost 3000 slash users we can access our users that we created. So let's try it. Here I have a localhost 3000 slash users and as you can see here is our array with objects. So this is normal API with normal get request. What is more important here you can see that you can also do 
put post patch and delete request, which means out of the box in 30 seconds, actually, we get all API things that we don't need to create. And what is most important, if you will do, for example, post, then our DB JSON will be automatically updated by JSON server, which means this is actually our real database and we can change it in real time. And of course, if we will reload the page, then we will load uh, this entries from db.json. So our API is completely ready and we can start using it with Angular. Let's jump right inside source app, app component TS, and this is the place where we want to fetch data. Normally in Angular we don't fetch data or we don't implement fetching directly in the component. We are doing it with services. But services will be our next video and for now to show you fetching and using HTTP in Angular we will simply write inside component HTTP calls. So the question is what do we need to start with fetching data? So what do we want? Here we have Angular for beginners and here is our component. And we want to render users just when we started this component, so on initialize of this component. And to do this there is a special method in Angular, it is called ng on init. And here we are given void and when we write here console log ng on init, you can see that this method is called on initialize. You can see this in console. This is a console log on initialize of our component. So this is exactly the place where we want to start fetching data. Because we are sure, okay, component is there, now we need to fetch data. The question is how we can fetch them. For this, we need in our constructor to inject some things. So here we need to write private HTTP and here is HTTP client. And then we are just closing round brackets. And actually we can move it a little bit on the bottom before ng on init so our data about users is on the top. But as you can see I can't auto import HTTP client and you will see why in a second. Let's do it by hands here and you will get what I'm talking about. So here we need to import HTTP client from and this is angular slash common slash HTTP. So as you can see we don't need to install anything, it is already there. And now let's check in browser and everything is red and you can see that we have an error no provider for http client and this is exactly why i didn't have autocomplete because http client is not available inside our module because we didn't inject the module actually here http client is a service so basically additional thing with which we can do a request to our api but in order to use http client inside our component we need to inject additional http client module inside our module where this component is registered the question is where is this component registered of course in app module ts so here we need to add HTTP client module. And now here I have comma and we want to move this import on the top. So now we injected in our app module HTTP client module and we can use now in app component HTTP client. As you can see in browser we don't have any errors because the module is there. This is why we can inject in constructor HTTP client. So here HTTP client is available for us inside this, so let's try to use it here. So we want to write this HTTP and as you can see with dot I have different methods, for example get, put, post, whatever we need. And we want to start with get. Here we simply need to provide the URL. And this is exactly the URL that we want to use, HTTP localhost 3000 slash users. Now at the end we need to write dot subscribe and here result and here let's console log our result. And I will tell you what is subscribe in a second. So if we will reload the page you can see here that in result we get our data from API. And this is exactly how we are getting data from API. With this HTTP get for example then the URL and then we have dot subscribe. And the question is what is this subscribe? 
So actually Angular is built with the help of RxJS. And if you don't know what RxJS is, uh, RxJS is the library to work with streams. What are streams? This is something kind of promises, but actually uh, more, because promises we can resolve only once. We have just dot then, and something happened in then. With streams, it's another way. We don't have dot then, we have dot subscribe, and every time when a new value appears in our stream, we are getting inside subscribe new values, which means in our case, this code can be triggered a lot of times. If this is our stream and if the stream will get new value of course it's not the case with http request but a lot of times you have uh, streams on which you can subscribe and get results many times so you can just imagine that subscribe is in this case something like dot then and here is our callback where we're getting a result and our result is exactly users and as you can see here, we have result an object, and this is also not super clear. So we know that we are getting here users. So for this, we can say that users is our user interface array, because we already created typings in previous lesson, and it is nice to use typings everywhere. And now here we can write users, and if we will check this variable, you can see that this is user interface. And now what we just need to do is assign inside these users our users that we fetched from the backend. Now here on the top we don't need all these users at all and we can simply remove it. But as you can see I am leaving the default value empty array. The question is why I did this and not just removed it like this, because in this case the default value of users will be undefined, which means for example we can't uh, call a for loop on undefined and our code will be broken. If at the beginning we have empty array and then we just fill it with data here, then nothing will be broken because it is an array in any case. So here we simply wrote this HTTP get, we're fetching data, and in subscribe we're setting these users. And as you can see now here, we're getting users from our API. So we reload the page and then you, as you can see in network, we have the users request, here it is, HTTP localhost 3000 slash users, and this is our response, which is just an array. And after we're getting it, we simply set it in these users. So in Angular it is quite easy to work with API because you are getting almost everything out of the box. So you have this HTTP service and you simply call it on every method uh, that you need, for example get or post or whatever. In this video you learned how to set up JSON server to create a fake API in a matter of seconds and how Angular can communicate with API with the help of HTTP client. You simply need to inject HTTP client inside your component and then register module inside your module where this component is declared. And if Angular for Beginners course is too easy for you, don't forget to check my advanced Angular course where we are creating the whole Angular application from start to the end and it is going for 10 hours. And if you like this video and you want more content like this, don't forget to put thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in my next video.